On to step two, preparing your hardware. I went through the storage room uh, and I came across my old computer chassis uh, from before I upgraded to the Thermaltake Zazer 6. Uh, and I know I'm going to get the question, what chassis is this? Because people will see the video and say, hey, that's pretty cool for this. Uh, and I'll tell you, I don't know. I looked on the web, I tried to find it out for you, but I couldn't. It's an old hard, uh, old chassis, so I'm sure that uh, if it's available, it's not going to be available new. So, so that said, I'll tell you what I do like about this chassis and why I selected it, so that when you're shopping for a chassis, if you're buying, uh, if you're going into a store and actually buying a new chassis, or if you're looking on the web, here are some of the things that I like about this chassis for what we're doing. First off, it has drive trays. It's nice and easy to... Uh, insert and remove these drives. It's toolless, so you don't actually need to screw your drives into a, a cage, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff, and you'll see that it actually holds five drives right out of the box. Uh, it's kind of cool because it actually has a carrying handle up at the top, so in the case of, you know, say a fire or an alien invasion, you can just grab that thing, shut it down, and walk out the door. So, uh, that's kind of cool as well. Uh, it's got lots of room up at the top with five and a, five and a quarter inch uh, bays, so if we want to add a, a drive cage in the future, if we want to expand our drive array, we'll be able to do that no problem. Uh, I can see even with an optical drive in there, there are four five and a quarter bays open at this time. Uh, it's got good, good airflow, and speaking of which, there's actually a, a chassis fan that blows cool air from the outside of the chassis uh, over top of the drive bay. Uh, so that keeps your hard drives cooler, and that's a really good thing for a network-attached storage device. Uh, that said, Unraid is actually going to spin down my drives after an hour by default, um, so they're not going to be running all the time, but it's still nice to have cooling over your drives. Then uh, there's also nice cooling out the back and a really, uh, you know, a good amount of cooling going through the chassis and nice airflow. That's very important. I mentioned about tool-free design, that's really great, uh, but in a case, think about this, if your drive ever does crash, if you have a hard drive crash, you need to get the old drive out and get a new drive in there as quick as possible. You don't want to be monkeying around for an hour. It's nice that you can just remove the side panel, take out the old drive, put in the new, and you're good to go. Next on our hardware agenda, we need to select a power supply. I've selected the Thermaltake Tough Power, uh, 650 watt. And it's nice because it has really great cooling. It runs nice and cool. It's got a couple of different rails, uh, and it has uh, wound spiral uh, modular cables. So we're going to get better airflow because any cables that you're not using, you can disconnect from the power supply, and the cables that you are using are not those big clunky ones that obstruct airflow. They're actually nice woven cables. So. Uh, from there, we need to select a motherboard, and the way that we need to select that is just to make sure that one, it's compatible with Unraid, and two, of course, it has to be able to boot from USB. So, because we're going to be booting Unraid from our USB flash drive, you need to be able to have that feature. So some of the old, old, old computers are not going to have that, obviously, but if you get a semi, you know, a relatively reasonably new uh, system, uh, you're going to be able to boot from USB. This system that I've selected is actually a Prescott. It's a Pentium 4. Uh, 478 pin, and so it is an old computer, uh, but the chip is 3 gigahertz uh, Prescott, which means it has hyper-threading, and then we've got uh, two sticks of 512 megs of RAM, so uh, a single gig uh, running in dual-channel mode, so that's very good. So my way of testing whether or not this is going to work for us is, of course, to just hook it up and uh, plug in that USB and try booting from the USB device. If it works, you're good to go. If it doesn't, then you're going to have to move on to the next system. Another thing that I liked about this motherboard, which was just something that came in on a trade-in, uh, is that it has a really nice uh, cooler on the CPU. Some final thoughts when we're selecting our motherboard for our Unraid server. Of course, remember, it has to be able to boot from USB. If it can't, you're not going to be able to boot into Unraid. Uh, also, we want to make sure that there's some SATA headers on the motherboard. That's going to allow us to uh, connect our hard drives just to get us started. But then this uh, motherboard also has three PCI slots. That's handy because when I run out of headers, and you'll see that there's only two on this uh, motherboard, uh, when I run out of headers, I'm able to install PCI uh, SATA controller cards. That's going to give me uh, much more space, and you'll see that I've actually had to use uh, one of those cards in order to install a third drive in this system. Um, also, uh, you want to make sure that this computer is going to be able to boot up without a keyboard or a monitor because most likely you're going to want this thing to be headless because it's accessible through your web browser from any network connected computer. You don't ever have to actually sit down and use your Unraid server physically sitting at that computer. 
it's just running on your network. It's a network attached storage box. When you want to access it, you do so through the network and through your web browser. So there's, that's, uh, that's something that to me is important. I want to be able to run it without a monitor, without a keyboard, without a 